Yeah, let me just make sure I'm sharing my audio correctly first. Okay, yes, I believe that is all good. Now I was just going to see if I couldn't. Oh, well, maybe I can't do it in full screen. Okay, anyways, uh, please let me know if anything starts to go wrong. I just jump in um, if there's nothing that you can't hear, something like that. But um, just a quick introduction. Um, again, my name is Chase Carter. I'm a music media production student at Ball State, finish up his last semester as an undergrad. Um, and today I wanted to talk a bit about creating music for visual media and sort of how to get started and some uh, the experiments I've tried and some things I've learned just getting started but this really complex subject this semester. Um, and so the at-home edition, a beginner's guide to tools um, for in the box for video, um, what I mean by that is um, I wanted to work with the current uh, setup that I had um, in sort of a way uh, that I could continue uh, these projects in the future. Um, the, and without the studios of Ball State. Um, so uh, sort of my inspiration for this project, um, I, I worked for the scene for India Public Radio for a really long time. Um, and a lot of what I did working for them um, was uh, mixing music to go along. Um, actually, one of the pictures that I have um, on the bottom right there is one of the house call videos we recorded. Um, so it was a lot of teamwork um, where mainly I was working more on the music where someone else was working on the video and the film. So uh, working with film is something that's still new to me. Um, and I was also inspired by a class that I sort of accidentally got enrolled in this semester. Uh, a lot of people have to take orchestration for their theory credit um, as a music production major. I actually got to take composing for visual media, and I think it's a lot more applicable to what we do as um, music majors uh, and pr or music production majors. Um, so a lot of my experience so far before I took on this project was repairing audio, um, recording live music, um, making that record music and mastering. Um, and so it's given me a lot of technical skills, um, but not as many creative skills. Um, and so just touching on my last point there on inspiration, um, Enigmas X Levi is some, uh, or some of my friends I've been working with this semester, are also my creative partners. Um, and I've developed a few light motifs uh, to be used in future videos and um, a video that I'll show you later in the program. So, um, Sort of with this project, I also wanted to say uh, one, one of my favorite quotes is actually from a more recent movie and uh, it's appropriate for visual media um, is this Into the Spider-Verse. Peter Parker says to the kid Max, I think, uh, take a leap of faith. And that's sort of what I did was take a leap of faith. Um, so this slide, what I sort of wanted to get across with that um, is that I think it's a really easy transition to go from music media production to um, doing something for visual media, um, mainly because, I mean, music, you think music entertainment industry, um, and a lot of that goes along, a lot of creators um, have visual content along with their music. So it's sort of important to be able to um, do multiple things uh, in, in technology with music. Um, and so, what I was exploring with this is pr practicing that unfamiliar subject. Another thing that really I had to gain um, some experience with was agile management. Um, and that is uh, sort of having to work when things are done. So understanding that uh, the direction you're traveling might change as uh, things change with the project. And I, there, I mean, we talked about that in this course as well. Um, I think it's important working with others to know how to um, manage in that way. So um, another thing I'm gonna to touch on in this is some new tools that I've um, actually gained or 
that I've downloaded um, that were either really affordable or absolutely free um, to be able to use. Uh, they There's always new apps coming out and new ways that you could be able um, to streamline your composition process for video, um, as well as um, uh, easing sort of the mix uh, constraints of what you're doing. So um, uh, a few constraints and goals, just to be clear. Um, I wanted to be able to create some music and video that would go on multiple platforms. So having an understanding for what platforms prefer in their release and distribution. So like loudness and aspect ratio are some really big considerations to take into effect, um, as well as um, frame rate um, comes into play later. Um, I wanted to experiment with leitmotif and creating some of my own music that was a given. Um, and I'm gonna use all my own stuff. So I already touched on all of that. So what I have right now, you don't need anything too fancy to be able to run the programs I'm gonna be talking about. Um, I have a MacBook Pro i5 dual core, early 2015, it's getting older, getting slower, still runs it. Um, I, it's really necessary to have a MIDI controller to um, actually the MIDI controller I have currently that I've been using for this project. Um, I purchased off of um, Adam Fanassier for $50. So that was a steal. Um, always try to econom economize when you can, um, whenever you're getting stuff. Um, I think the most expensive thing in my uh, setup is probably my DAW, which is Studio One for Logic Pro. Um, those are, uh, I would call my textbook purchases for this last semester. So um, I've actually had them for a little bit, but um, if you've been going throughout this whole pandemic without either a songwriter version or a professional version of a DAW, um, my heart's out to you. So um, I also use the isotope suite. That's not really necessary. I use that for mixing. Um, the one I think that's most interesting in this list is actually Klimper. Um, which is a MIDI control software that you actually can program um, the different chord patterns into to sort of give yourself a starting point uh, if you're not sure what chords to use. Uh, I'm not really someone who's traditionally trained with theory, so I'll talk about that a little later. I mean, really, all the videos that I showed, um, unless I was doing it in Logic, because Logic has its own built-in um, video sort of editing software. I used iMovie and CapCut. iMovie is free if you have um, an Apple system and CapCut is also free to download on Android and iOS. It's actually from your phone. So um, it's actually, I'm really, uh, one thing I'm surprised about by uh, researching a little bit more into this project is how much you can actually do on your phone nowadays. And that wasn't something I was completely aware about before I dove into this. So, um, and really to just start com composing, you don't really need uh, much more than a background in music. Um, knowing how to use music to sort of portray your emotions or can portray other people's emotions, I think is really important. Um, and also being honest with yourself. So knowing when to move on from something that's maybe not a good composition and also sort of evaluating, oh yeah, that's um, evaluating where you're at in the process and in, um, in, in the discovering it. it's just a very, um, just being honest, it's always an important thing. So. Um, so this is one thing I wanted to highlight on. I think it's the most important um, before you start making any music to video, and that is starting with the lock picture first. So what the lock picture is, is a um, fully edited video. So like all the cuts are done and it's really just waiting for um, what I put underneath there, the post-production considerations um, and composing the actual music and mixing. Um, dubbing, the, we, I like to get mixing and mastering and using, uh, mastering is obviously something very different than mixing. Um, dubbing is also something very different from mixing. Um, mixing and uh, dubbing is actually more um, for 
uh, adding in voice and the music at the same time um, in that mixing. Mixing for music is usually done separately from when you find with the final um, picture. So um, where I was going with that is you always want to start with the locked picture because um, adding context to what's happening on screen um, can be very hard to do after the fact. Um, so creating visual from music, is, it could be done, um, but it's not as recommended. Um, a few of the, the things I'll show you are music that I created before making video. Um, it's really a, a, is now waiting to be transformed into something else um, because of that mistake. But some other interesting things that you could add um, in your um, different visual media is like is folly. Um, folly is um, sort of increasing the dr uh, drama of on-screen actions. So like um, another word that's sort of associated with folly is sweetening. Um, and that's uh, making a sound sort of adding to the sound um, that is actually present in the recording. Um, so uh, timing notes and spotting are really important um, when you have a locked picture. Um, so when you spot a film, a lot of times you're looking for sort of the three ways you can use um, music to portray on-screen actions, which whether it's the physical actions, um, the psychological actions or the transitional um, moments of the screen. So physical actions, like actually the physical elements on screen happening um, into emotional. So that underlying emotions that maybe are unspoken. Um, and then final transitional elements. And I'll, I have another slide for this one. Um, transitional elements are more to smooth and make uh, those visual cuts unrecognizable. So um, I'm going to skip this one. Basically, what I was trying to uh, say with this slide is that um, uh, Richard Davis, and this is a book I've been reading a lot of. Um, is com the complete guide to film scoring um, by Richard Davis. And uh, he says there's really two approaches to composing as with pencil and paper, um, like writing each individual chord, note, and melody, and rhythm, or sequencing. Um, and he says both are fair to professional musicians. So you should never have to, never expect that you have to like write something on paper um, in order for it to be. Um, music. Um, it, it helps with someone like me, especially the tool I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Um, and for somebody who's not as familiar with traditional notation, like um, how to write your um, inversions on the fly and things like that, it sort of just happens naturally in real time with the video that's in front of you. Um, and so that's what I was talking about just a second ago, um, what, why music is important for video. There was a time um, when music was not used at all in different uh, videos that were shown in the public um, and that that have been released to, that, that I would expect that a video or a movie that was released now would um, fail because it's just something that is so expected um, nowadays. Um, so, would they talk about a few different things in applying some theoretical practices into your visual perform and to visual um, media? And one of those things is ide fixe um, or a fixed idea that I, um, I believe comes from, or well, one of the most popular examples of ide fixe is. Uh, Symphony Fantastique um, by Berlois. Berlois I, I hope I didn't butcher that. Um, and leitmotif is another thing um, that is a recurring theme or melody that represents a certain emotion or character. Um, and compartible, uh, so a new one that I sort of wanted to add to that was compartmentalization. So that's sort of more of organization of moods and places. Um, and what you what a successful visual composer might do is um, take those um, fixed ideas and those recurrent themes 
and sort of fix them with different um, scenes or um, on-screen actions that'll happen. And um, using uh, either a Nide Fixe or a light motif and compartmentalizing them, um, it's a long word, um, compartmentalizing them in a way um, can add continuity to the work that you're creating. Um, uh, Davis also mentions it's really important to have to experiment in different genre um, and giving yourself a diverse um, sort of a diverse palette. Um, and so just moving on. Um, uh, so getting started with visual media, this is one of the first um, videos that I created. And actually the way I created it was by taking a silent movie that had no sound at all to it and um, composing for one of the scenes for that. Um, and the, the name of this translates to um, the Fantastic Butterfly. Um, and it's by George Millis. So um, again, I'm, I'm gonna play this video quickly. That's only about a minute. Um, and this is um, how I started getting into composing for um, video. So here we go. Oh, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to stop it there, but um, yeah, this was this is sort of a the first time I got started um using some film and video and creating something new. Um. Uh. So yeah. Uh. What was a couple of things that I wanted to point out in this clip? Um. Just as I was, I was getting started, as um, if you listen to. A few portions of that when, um, like when he's moving, uh, I have a different theme there for the, or I have different themes for each of the characters um, as they enter. Um, like the butterfly, I think is the the flute there at the top um, playing, and there's a harp. Um, so I I will move on from this one. Um, this is another way I sort of got as got started. Um, and composing for some visual media. So actually you can find some of these older uh, videos on the internet and um, they're free to download and you can, you, you get the, the, just the audio track of the, the voice um, and the, um, but you don't get the, the music that was playing with the, the TV show. Um, so uh, what I have here is just the original uh, video that I was working with, um, and I had uh, also had an audio track with the actual um, what they're saying on there, and I added some some music to this one. Uh, so, sort of uh, another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, well, I'll, I'll talk about it here in a minute. I'll just play a little bit of this to start. <laughs> It, it's them. Them? What do you mean? Yeah, uh, it's Ben Seifel and that Tex, and they seen Abby and they grabbed her and they're just treating her something terrible. Come on. So, yeah, what? Uh, so when I first got this scene, like those those footsteps and stuff you hear like that, um, wouldn't have been there like in this scene, um, and really, um, 
there's another spot I wanted to find. Ah, uh, yes, like that. Um, I don't know if that was clear, so I'm gonna rewind it a little bit. So, sort of like these actions, action um, things that you don't really think about as well, um, usually aren't there um, until someone else puts them there. That's what I was trying to explain by going by talking about um, folly and sort of diegetic music. Whereas more uh, diegetic music is uh, music that can be heard by the characters on screen um, with the cast, or usually is played by characters in the movie too. Um, whereas this is more folly uh, with the the smacking noises. So another thing I messed around with in this video um, is. Uh, sort of a special technique of film recording or film composition, which is called Mickey Mousing. Um, Mickey Mousing, uh, I was sort of like the Tom and Jerry uh, sort of mimicking actions on the screen um, of what's going on. And that's what I sort of tried to do with the second part of this. Um, you mistake, like the wind up, the snare, the crash, the symbol. the punch noise so like all that stuff has to be added in um and so I'll, i i'm i'm gonna put this one i think on my um website when i release the url to everybody um but this one's only three minutes and um so i sort of use the the, mo the first motif there at the beginning um as like ben seipel that's the bad guy in this scene um in more like a brooding and menacing way um, by the the strings on tremolo low there. So um, so with with these ones, I was primarily using Logic Pro X, and that's why I didn't really want to talk about it a lot. I think that Logic has a really good um, library to start if you're just trying to make some things quickly if you want to move from presets. Um, I've been using recently, however, um, Spitfire Audio, which I sort of wanted to talk a bit about. Uh, Spitfire Audio um, gives a lot of free samples away. Um, so there's actually an entire app you can download um, that has nothing but VS or plugins that work with their VST plugin download that works, I think, with pretty much any any DAW that you have. Uh, one of their coolest samples that packs that they have, um, this is one you have to jump through a hoop for. Um, so if you're on Spitfire's website, I think you have to give them an email and answer a survey. Um, and you can get this Spitfire um, BBC Orchestra sample library, which is freaking awesome. Um, it has all of these instruments and it breaks, so, this is like the actual instrument interface. You can see like the MIDI down here. Um, but um, on, on this one, oh, sorry. I'm like wanting to point at my screen. I didn't practice that part. Um, so I'm gonna use my mouse. But uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, um, it even sets it out in like how they normally sit. So when you click on each of these sections, like right here, it would say like uh, bases and then it has um, like the brass section and the woodwinds right here, the percussion. So um, it visually breaks it down and then it indexes it as well. Um, the nice thing that's different, I think that it adds from Logic that I don't like about Logic, um, what I've been composing is you can actually vary a lot of the strings articulation, which gives you um, a lot more to choose from when you're making different choices. This is just sort of a breakdown of what it looks like when you get into the Labs plugin. Um, the BBC plugin and the Labs plugin are just a little separate, but it's in the same um, launcher, same downloading platform. Um, this is another one that I started to use as well. Um, Independence Free is produced by Magix. Um, it, it works pretty well. Um, however, I would steer towards using um, the, the Spitfire plugins, because they are pretty good. The Magix plugins, that's about a two gigabyte library. Um, 
there's also a few uh, software hoops you have to hop through if you're a Mac user um, and verifying it, um, which can get frustrating if you're not a snooper. So um, this is the, the, um, the application I really wanted to talk about, which is Klimper. Um, I think this application was $30, if I'm remembering correctly, um, but it's really useful. Um, basically what it is, is it's a built-in software or it's an instrument that acts like a MIDI controller um, in your computer. Um, so it sends MIDI signals to your MIDI device. Um, and sort of what I was talking about here was how to set that up. So you can go to external devices, add it, and you add it like you're adding a new uh, keyboard. Um, but when you go into this program, you can set um, the parameters of your session. So if you're at a certain BPM, um, when you select the key, um, that sort of gives you the selection down here. Um, it actually makes it pretty easy to sort of see all the possible notes in a certain key. Um, you can also change these while you're working. Um, and they actually, um, you, you can, you take these little dots and it's hard to explain um, unless you're seeing it, um, but you take these dots and you can drag them up into this um, playback bar. And when you press the play button and you're recording in your DAW, it will record the notes that you had. Um, this really reminds me a lot of like the Grace software, except um, a lot more streamlined and you don't have to make rhythmic choices when you're, um, it, it's, you know, there's no coding involved. Um, so this has been a really useful tool for me this semester. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can transfer. So I, this is going back to um, the light motif, which you should use in any video you're creating or any brand you're making um, to create um, continuity and something that's memorable. But there's a lot of different ways you can change it that would still give it um, a similar feeling. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, the light motifs I've created this semester for some of my friends and creative partners, um, which is Enigma X Levi. Are they then they create um, different fashion patterns. And these are a few um, uh, melodies I created um, in inspiration from the designs they've um, been sharing with me um, and for the eventually in the future to use the melodic content to create some videos. Um, so the melody is based off of a B major scale was really what I was thinking about. Um, it leaves a lot of room open for different um, sort of harmonically how you can do things. Um, but I wanted to just play um, as I'm getting towards the end of my 30 minutes here. Um, I'll play uh, two things. Um, so these are all, so I just want to play a brief bit of each of these actually. So um, these each have sort of a different mood or character that are based around the same key. Um, So that one was sort of the the rhythmic variation there, the da 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 da. da. Um, and that's a variation of what I was just showing you. Um, this is, I think, the original one I had started out with. Um, I'm not sure what this will pick up, but we'll find out. That was what I was trying to avoid. Here we go again.
So that was, oh, what is playing? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Um, this was the last one I'll show you. So um, if I were descri to describe um, how these have transformed, um, they've gotten closer to um, this one at the end, which is iconic, I call it. Um, let me see if I can just find a quick thing here. So um, I plan to use those melodies um, and really you don't need to use anything special. Um, you could use something like Final Cut Pro to put all um, like your music comp composition stuff into your video. Um, but um, really you can get pretty good quality for just social media release out of um, those programs and like CapCut, like I was talking about earlier, which is completely on your phone. Um, this, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this one. Um, this is Moving Space. This is um, the video that I've finished um, that has, again, using that same um, melody with the um, sort of based around B major. Um, so here we go. You're muted. Thank you. Uh, all I was trying to say there at the end um, was I hope that you liked that video. Um, this is uh, sort of a picture of where they've been working recently. Um, it, the, the designers are Daria Johnson and Levi Portillo. Um, and they're all been awesome to work with and just giving me ideas on sort of where to take things. Um, even if um, we haven't used anything in their actual releases yet. Um, and what I've been working on is trying to find a way to put some of the music that I have worked on into sort of like maybe more background music as they get onto their page and um, sort of individual um, sounds uh, like in their shop area here. Uh, what I put was a, a picture of um, sort of their idea for a website layout and um, what I've done so far for that website layout um, and what I want, what I plan to do is add. Um, so whenever you're scrolling over something, it sort of makes a different noise. And what I've shown you um, so far, I've just been more of my experiences or experiments in um, creating inspired music and branding. So um, now that you've sat through um, 30 minutes, uh, I hope that we've all, oh, I don't know if I, 
stop this. Aha, yes. I hope we've learned a little bit about um, some more considerations to make for composing for visual media. Anything special about when the when the visual media is clothing, or do you consider it still video because that's what you're composing for? Sure. Um, so what I, maybe I wasn't as clear with that um, point, but really that goes back to compartmentalization, I think, um, and creating a different mood for um, each um, design. Um, those, I, I guess another, something I could have added to my presentation there um, was each design, I guess, went with um, the different light motifs that I had. Um, the, the Enigmas one, I think, was, was supposed to be like a general concept. Um, so uh, developing something from more um, a minimalistic approach and starting with less and then um, coming out with more. Um, I think that leaves it open. Uh, their, their ideals um, behind their creations um, are sort of keeping it more open-ended and um, something for everybody. So that's something I was trying to, to keep in mind with what I, what I made. So not trying to dive too deep into a certain genre or style. Makia, do you have any questions? You're a good interviewer. What would you ask Chase to bring out his big ideas? Um, I can't really think of any questions. It was awesome. Sorry, I wasn't prepared okay. to ask any questions. That's oh, it's fine. OK. <laughs> Maybe I'll have him on your podcast someday. You have more time to think about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's always hard on Zoom. Have you thought of maybe going the other way and working with designers to design music for musicians? I have not. What do you have? You, uh, what musicians are known for their fashion lines? I was just listening to a podcast with Macklemore on Armchair Expert, I think it was. Um, who who is? doing that frontier. I know Black Eyed Peas had wearable speakers to go with their stuff. Or well, anybody I, you're inspired by? Uh, not so, well, I guess um, a recent controversy uh, surrounding music and fashion, I think his, I think his name's Mischief, um, created these Nike Air Jordan shoes um, that appeared in, um, I think it's uh, Little Nas uh, X. I think that he had those Nikes in his music video and it was like a whole big uh, thing around like uh, having, uh, I think they associated uh, Satan and hell with uh, their, the shoes. So uh, I guess is, it, oh, do we lose Dr. Willie? <laughs> 